graphics are uh, the person bringing me the, the sponsor signed it. Unfortunately, he got sick and couldn't make it. And our room got double booked, and so we ended up here at last minute. And unfortunately, our last speaker, his flight was delayed by several hours, so he won't make it. So we have a, uh, so Ellen will be presenting for Sony here. Marketing Manager Technology Solutions for Sony Canada. Uh, she's been with Sony for 15 years and has held both product management and marketing manager positions with responsibilities in a variety of areas, including live production, editing, archiving, production workflow, and IP production. Ellen currently serves as the marketing manager for Sony's technology solutions team with additional marketing responsibilities for Sony's production switchers, archive, and IP production products. As part of the technology solutions team, she delivers systems design integration or integrating new Sony technology with third party components into system solutions. Ellen has conducted seminars, training, promotional, sorry, training, promoting emerging technologies, and produces a range of documentation, including sales and product literature, RFP responses, user manuals, operating guides targeted at both salesperson and end users. Prior to joining Sony, Ellen worked on a number of R&D and manufacturing products focusing on the development of nonlinear editing products. Her main areas of responsibility on these products was feature specifications and user interface design. She's worked for many years in the film and television in an editorial capacity. Ellen has a BA Honors from the Film Studies of Queen's University. Everyone, let's welcome Ellen. <laughs> Gagioni's uh, understudy, so uh, instead of getting a big brain with multiple engineering degrees, you're getting a slightly smaller brain with uh, arts degree. So um, hopefully I can do the content justice and, and uh, um, what I'm going to be talking about is uh, AV over IP for uh, live production purposes. And uh, basically if we look at the current broadcast facility scenario, uh, we have uh, two main infrastructures. We have uh, SCI for plant infrastructure and moving real-time video around uh, for live production. And then we have IP for data and file transfer, which is non-real-time and can be faster or slower than real-time. So the question is, is it time to merge these infrastructures uh, together? The IP world is expanding and uh, we've got ever-increasing demand. Uh, according to Cisco, global IP traffic will reach 1 million gigabit bytes <coughs> per month in uh, 2016, so that's next year. Another interesting Cisco fact, it will take an individual over 5 million years <coughs> to watch the amount of video that will cross global IP networks in a month in the year 2018. That's a lot of crazy cat videos. <laughs> so there's a rapid demand for um, available bandwidth, and uh, we're also seeing the commoditization of network infrastructure here that is helping to move this uh, IP world into our broadcast environment. There's also technological progress. So there's the development of tools allowing for sub-microsecond uh, timing accuracy in uh, the AV over IP uh, world, and that includes IEEE 1588 Precision Time Protocol, and uh, Symphony 2059 for AV synchronization, which basically uh, creates a, uh, or sets a master clock and um, a set of PTP slaves. So uh, basically, um, a timestamp is uh, added to each packet that leaves uh, the system, and uh, we compare departure and arrival times, and then can uh, create a sync relationship between the master and the slave. And that allows for the 80 packets to coexist over network traffic. So there are a lot of potentials of an IP situation or uh, solution. 
Uh, practical considerations, you can move away from application-specific hardware, um, SDI routers, and use commodity IT hardware for cost reduction, easy expansion, and flexibility. There's uh, lower cable requirements, and I'll get um, to some examples of that in a second. A format agnostic for increased flexibility, so the same pipe can carry standard definition, high definition, 4K, and beyond that. As well, that pipe can uh, incorporate audio, camera control, genlock, intercom, and tally into the stream. Um, and those signals uh, often required individual or um, separate uh, infrastructures uh, for, for the signals to be carried. So, And we can also see workflow efficiencies, uh, centralized control rooms, so that you can have um, one place and have remote um, areas sending their signals back to that centralized control or, uh, control room and uh, centralized resource management as well as simplified maintenance of all the connected devices. So if we look at uh, a production truck scenario and uh, 4K uh, situation, uh, so the truck has uh, eight cameras, an SDI router, a switcher, uh, some monitoring servers, etc. We basically come up with a basic cable number of uh, 362 pieces of BNC cable with a cable weight of approximately 268 kilograms. If we change this infrastructure to an IP infrastructure, we see a drastic um, reduction in the number of cables down to 88 <coughs> pieces. And whether you're using copper or fiber, that can be 40 kilo, um, kilograms uh, or 11 kilograms. So that's a huge difference as far as weight goes. So we're looking at approximate weight reduction of 85%. So that makes a huge difference for our truck infrastructure, but also for our physical infrastructures within our buildings as well. So there are a number of requirements and challenges of uh, AV over IP, and uh, we need to, of course, provide similar or better performance and reliability. That includes the real-time delivery of signals with ne negligible delay, and minima, uh, minimizing the unpredictability of uh, networks. We need to provide clean switching, synchronous pro processing, so that all of the IP infrastructure works in conjunction with the planned infrastructure. We need to provide redundancy, uh, security, and accommodate uh, new and existing formats. So we have to be able to go from SD all the way up to uh, UHD and further as well. We need to have simple control surfaces so that our human operators can operate them, and we need to be able to orchestrate all of the signals, timing and bandwidth allocations and priority allocations within that network. And that hopefully will uh, offer some improvements to the current workflows that um, we are experiencing. Um, the previous speaker talked a lot about video payload, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on uh, this slide here, but of course we've got uncompressed 4K at 12 gigabits per second, uh, which is uh, not possible to put into a 10 gig pipe. So in order to <coughs> decrease the payload, uh, compression is required, and that allows us to bring 4K into a manageable throughput and to bring added efficiency to HD and other formats. So we need a high quality, low latency codec that's rugged, fast, with excellent multi-generational integrity. So we've come up with a codec that we call LLVC. Um, it's not a great name, but uh, it stands for Low Latency Video Codec. And it allows us to take uh, 4K, <coughs> compress it so that we can actually push two channels of 4K through a 10 gig uh, pipe, compress three gig so that we can um, run two channels through a gigabit Ethernet pipe, and uh, four channels of HD through that pipe as well. <coughs> So in order to exist in our current SDI world, we need to have our IP worlds and SD worlds uh, work together. And a lot of that can be done through hardware. So what we need are SDI to IP and IP to SDI interfaces. Um, some of those have to be external to support legacy um, products, and uh, other ones can be internal uh, and be incorporated into future products. And that can take the shape of uh, LSI chips, FPGA, PCI cards, or uh, standalone portable interfaces. So 
what is the signal processing that goes into a card like this? And it looks something like this with the transmitter side at the top, the <coughs> receiver side represented at the bottom. So the SDI signal comes into um, this processing unit and it is encoded using our LOEC. It can also, if you want, bypass that encoding process and go through uncompressed. So if you do have the pipeline um, that is big enough for an uncompressed signal, you can uh, bypass the encoding. Then there's forward error correction, and uh, what we're doing here is we're processing the error correction on the frame boundary so that we've got clean video sec um, switching capabilities. And then the next step is the packetization. And in this case, we are actually taking the video, the audio, and the data packets separately so that they can be uh, independently handled. Then there's the sync process as well. Um, using the SMPD 2059 protocol um, so you can have uh, industry or facility-wide SIMP. So using the, in, the efficient codec and intelligent packetization, we can basically allow for extremely low latency, a single frame, which includes delays for network link, encode, decode, and buffering, and basically <coughs> provide clean video, video switching uh, through the unit. We also have to pro provide for redundancy. So in a regular IP switch, a single stream can be sent along a single path with um, a number of network switches uh, connected, which will also allow you to um, reroute that path. So if there is a disturbance within one signal, uh, the system basically switches to the secondary signal going through. The problem is that there is a temporary data um, interruption at that point and you get a glitch or a dropout in your picture. So in order to avoid that, um, basically what we're doing is we're duplicating the signal uh, through two paths, and on the receiving end, the system basically takes the first packets that it gets. So um, if there is a problem within the uh, system or within the stream, the receiver use, utilizes the packets that get there earliest. So if there is a problem in stream one, it can still uh, get hitless, uh, basically uh, change over there uh, without uh, any picture disruption. <coughs> and how do we achieve synchronization accuracy with off-the-shelf internet switches? <laughs> Ethernet switches, sorry. Um, so we're using precision time protocol uh, which basically creates that master clock and, and the uh, PTP slaves. But we also have to exist in an SDI world. So in an SDI world, we have a master sync generator with BNC cables connected to all our devices that provide sync for those devices. And then in, in the IP world, we have a PTP master um, that has the PTP slaves. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the AV sync signal uh, from the SDI system and feeding that to the master clock so that both the BNC or SDI devices and the PTP slaves um, remain in sync throughout the facility. Other things that we need to consider for multi-point transmission are uh, various efficiencies. We need to account for bandwidth allocation, priority resource management. We have to account for output options so that you have to know where you're sending your signal so that that signal can be processed uh, appropriately for the device that it's going to. Uh, security, customization, and basically to account for all of those um, items, uh, we've created a network management software which is basically the core of that IP system. And basically this software conducts all of the network traffic. So we have uh, technology in the actual processing the AVI to IP, or sorry, the AV to IP signal and then we have the network software that takes those signals and moves them to the appropriate places. So this software takes care of prioritizing the signals through the system, and it allows for IT and both AV related configurations. Um, it's a standard matrix cons um, configuration, so all of you that know the SDI matrix can easily operate this, so you have a, a, a destination and a source and you can basically map those sources anywhere you need to send them. It also has user rights and security management. So user rights uh, for uh, user security, but also um, 
security management on a device level, so you cannot connect an illegal device into the system to steal signals and so on. There's also a, a series of customizations of views, filters, and preferences, so that if you have a large facility or only interested in looking at, say, the 4K signals, or only interested in looking at the signals going to a specific area within that facility, then you can set up those filters and preferences to look at only those things. And it has a web-based interface so that you no longer are bound to a terminal somewhere in a machine room to look at your router. You can basically look at your router um, from your office, or you can also create custom control panels for wireless <coughs> tablet control. So essentially, you can be almost anywhere in the plant and still control your router. And it also collects status logs for all the connected devices and also allows you to perform upward um, firmware upgrades and other remote maintenance tasks. So uh, a lot of stuff just packed into uh, a bunch of software. Um, what the system management software also does is it allows for quality of service and, as I mentioned, bandwidth allocation and um, allowing to dynamically reserve and allocate paths for priority uh, signals. So you can do bandwidth reservation uh, using the controller, and then that controller will open up pipes to send a specific signal to a specific area or a number of areas. And within that network, you can still also send files uh, across as well. And of course, we have to play well with everybody, so uh, we are taking a standardized approach to this um, IP live production. And it is highly desirable that um, we use the emerging um, and standards that, uh, uh, that are coming out of uh, groups like SIMTI. So for the described solution that I um, just gave you, uh, the following standards have been adopted. The SIMTI 2022 series, um, dash six for HD-SDI mapping um, and stream transfer of uncompressed HD-SDI signals and the 227 for hitless switching and of course the SIFTI draft 2059 for um, PTP protocol and SIFTI epoch de definitions. However, some extensions um, to the current spec ha are being requested and I will describe these here. So uh, 20, 2022-6 currently maps the whole SDI payload information, including video and audio and metadata into a single package. So it does not deal with these um, elements independently on a packet level. So our proposal is a method by which video, audio, and metadata are placed in separate <coughs> packets so that they can be dealt with independently and that would allow uh, for compressed video signals to be accommodated more easily. We're also looking at SIMPTI 2022-5 uh, for forward error correction that currently allows a single uh, fact block to contain information related to two video frames. So switching at a datagram level um, in terms of fact is not possible or is difficult. So our proposal is a frame boundary aware um, forward error correction so that the effect block terminates when a frame, frame boundary is detected. And this will basically prevent transmission errors due to datagram loss. So we also have to deal with legacy infrastructure. So we're looking at external conversion capabilities um, so that you can bring your SDI world uh, into the IP world, and you can also take that IP world out into the SDI world. Um, so rack-mounted uh, type units and also portable devices for in-field um, conversion. And then also internal processing with, with what I mentioned, LSI chips and FPGAs <coughs> and PCI parts. So this is the world as, um, as we see it, uh, moving towards the uh, IP-based system. And so in the center you have your IP router and your network management software. And then you have your converters that uh, build bridges to the SDI world. And then on the other side here, basically you have new products coming out with uh, net media interfaces built directly into the products. And certainly Sony has committed to creating um, the future products, all with these 
uh, net media interfaces. So cameras, monitors, server switchers will all have these in the future. And then also work with our partners uh, to allow those <coughs> net media interfaces on their products as well. And then on the top, we have a remote maintenance server that basically allows you to look at all these products that are connected in terms of service and maintenance. So the goal is to essentially establish a net media interface uh, within a central broadcast station. So you can go floor to floor, room to room, um, and then eventually connect all the remote areas as well. So you can go on location, you can go to stadiums, you can go to arenas, um, and send all of those net media connected um, device or uh, signals back to your uh, main um, facility. And then of course eventually basically bring all of your regions into uh, the main IP world as well so everybody talks to everybody else. We have a number of net media interface supporters at this point and we are um, actively building partnerships with a number of third party uh, vendors. And just in case you are interested in additional Cisco trivia information about the um, IP networks, there's a link there. Um, we also have a uh, white paper on IP production if you're interested in receiving that. Uh, you can come and talk to me or any of my Sony colleagues that are here and we'd be happy to provide you with those. You mentioned the uh, control environment and, and everything. Will that be based on simply media device control protocol, or will that be a proprietary Sony thing? I don't know the answer to that. So, so what is a if I'm another vendor, what do I do to build a device that works in that environment? Um, there will be APIs available so that you can From Sony. tap tap. Yes. Okay, so it will be a Sony thing. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, sorry. So, collateral question. So, will 2022-5 work with your system or are you looking to have 2022-5 revised for your input? I believe that it will work with the system, but we're looking at enhancing it so that it will work more efficiently. But you're pushing that back into the standard for the standard or would you do something different for 2022-5? Will there be a Sony signal and a SMPTE signal or will SMPTE eventually there, adopt? There, there may be a Sony and a SMPTE signal. If you're keeping your, your um, signal within the Sony system, uh, it can basically work in that format, but if you're pushing it out, it will be able to conform to the SIMPTE standard. And then one last thing, audio, are you supporting ADS-67 audio, or are you going to do the separated audio thing you're talking about? No, it's currently under study. They're looking at all of the um, candidates for, for audio over IP, but AES is, is certainly one of the ones that is in the forefront. Some more questions? Thanks, Sony, again for uh, sponsoring tonight's meeting. Um, so much appreciate that with getting the food and everything. Um, I guess that uh, wraps up tonight. So we'll see everyone next month.